Just take a little sip. I better be careful so I just have to drop. Keep them coming. Keep them coming. Come on in here. Grab one. No, not more coming. Come on. Oh, yeah. Oh go. my, stay put to go. Oh, it's like, it's like candy. You have to fight. You have to fight. Best helpers there. Hey, what's up? How we doing? Come on in over here. Hey, team, I'm going to get you. How we doing? Oh, yeah, please. Come on. Oh, I mean, out. Here we go. Come on in. Drink it before we have the tubs. Here we go. I guess so. Here we go. Here we go. Hey, are we caught up? We need more. Are we caught up? There. Are we caught up Dusty. or we need more? Pretty good? Pretty good? We got two more. Need more? I'm going to confirm that that place to go comes. Oh, absolutely. Now, don't run off. we got to have the toast. We do have to have the toast. God bless you. You're coming. I'm just passing this. Here we go. Come on in here. You finally went on your way. Here we go. Well, I had to come or you wouldn't. That's, That's right. right. It, it would have been. Tell your kids they have to pour All right. Are we, we there? Irish. Are we good? Come on. We got the little ones in here. Got them drinks. Who else needs one? Watch this. Everybody good? Fires, hot tires. He's working. He said his boss got him working. Come on here. Right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. I want to thank all y'all for being here in the great state of Texas, the wonderful town of Clarendon, and all those fine people that put on the Charles Goodnight Memorial Chuck Wagon Cook-Off. How about a big yeah. hoo yeah. You're slurring your words. <laughs> <laughs> It'll get worse when it gets better. <laughs> 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 Okay, we're ready to cook something now. Wow, this is great. I love seeing a lot of young people involved with Chuck Wagon Cook Off stuff. Yeah. Where are you guys based out of? Vega and Amarillo. Okay, and what is the name of your outfit? It's called Cross Wagon. Cross Wagon, and who are you? I'm Dusty I'm, Rains. I'm Brad Ray. Brad Ray. Um, this is Haley, Skylar, Chelsea, and then the kids. Okay. Well, what got you guys involved in doing these Chuck Wagon cook-offs? Because I've been doing this for years, and I've never seen a team. I presume that uh, all these people are your cook-off team. Uh, I've never seen a team this young. My dad actually started. We've been doing it for about 15 years. Okay. I've been doing it since I was like 10. <laughs> oh yes. Into it. Yeah. And then we, they just put us to work. <laughs> wow. And that's what it took, just putting you to work. Putting us to work. We learned the way. And so, what convinced you need to stick with it? Because it's a lot of hard work. Oh yeah. We get told what to do. <laughs> we have no fun. say. <laughs> it gets no, it's fun. Together. It gets us together. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Okay. And you're the cross wagon. Cross is that wagon. correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Is there a connection with that to a ranch or an organization? I'll let you handle that. <laughs> no. no, just tell them. I don't know. You tell them. Uh, it just it started uh, with my father-in-law. Uh, my brother had passed away um, in what, 99? 99. In 99, and that's when my dad started getting involved in all this to keep us all together. Right. So. Right. Well, I've been very concerned for years that this whole chuck wagon competition thing was just going to entirely die out because oh, no, I hope not. No, everybody no. keeps getting older and all of a sudden I see a brand new young team. Well, what can we do to encourage other younger people to carry on this tradition? I don't know if you can encourage it. A lot of people don't, they don't have a phone or stuff like that. They're not going to come up with this. <laughs> I don't know. They just need to try it out. Okay. What cooking? I'm sure they'll like it. All right. Well, good luck. Uh -huh. I've got more wagon crews to talk to. All right. So. Thank you. Appreciate it. Have you bet. Thank you. And uh, well, I uh, didn't ask you where you're out of. Vega. Out of Vega. Yes. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, we got two deals with Frisco. We'll do the judgment. Jack, can you bring me that box of steaks down to the bottom?
So here it is. Uh, what is your turn on time or turn in time this morning in uh, Clarendon? All right. They're down in the bottom. They're on the bottom shelf in that. Yeah. And how's it going so far? Going well. There are just three of you that are working on this team? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There's Jack Raymond and Adam Emerson, and I'm Todd Lemke. I'm well, pleased to meet you, Tom. We're, we're uh, Oklahoma, Choctaw and Mustang, Oklahoma. Wow, that's quite a distance. I didn't see you folks down at the National Cowboy Symposium last weekend. Was that a little bit too far to travel, or? No, we didn't go to it. We were, we all we try to do it just where we, we kind of have a select that we go to. We just haven't had yes, to that one yet. Yes, sir. Is there something special about this check off that? Uh, just, just a good one to go to. Close, pretty close to home, and we uh, we enjoy coming here. Yes, sir. We go to, we'll be in Riedos in a couple of weeks, and then Red Seagull after that. So. All right. Well, one thing I've noticed uh, that is sort of interesting about this team is that there are no females involved. So, well, we we, we don't have any. Uh, we're too mean, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> we just. Uh, Always, we've always had an all male crew. We've uh, we've always had a all male crew. We don't we don't think bad about women on the wagon, but we just always had an all female all male crew. Yes, sir. All of you from a ranching background? Uh, no, no. I do. Two of us do construction. Adam, what do you do? Well, he's doing construction underneath the... Uh, I watch gun smoke about 1 o'clock and then Bonanza right after that. <laughs> that's about it. We put we got a ranch, but it's Hidden Valley. Yeah. Ranch, dressing. That's about all closer we get to a ranch. But we're into construction and that's about, that's about all we do. What's your temperature? Ain't close. Okay. Not deep enough. With your wires. This is your job. <laughs> well, this takes quite a bit of work and some expense. What encourages you to come uh, to an event like this here in Clarendon? Oh, just fellowship more than anything. We just uh, got a bunch of good friends to come here, and we enjoy the people, and, and we just. We just enjoy being here. Yes, sir. I mean, there ain't, there ain't nobody here going to retire from this thing. They may quit, but they ain't going to be able to retire off of any of this. So. Right. That's it. Uh, and how long have you been coming here? Uh, I think it's about my fifth year. My fifth year of this one. I've been cooking with Jack. Jack got me started. And I've been cooking with Jack for, what, seven years, Jack? Eight? Yeah. <laughs> Adam, he's been in it for about two years now, so he's kind of a young guy on the but he's a good cook, he knows what he's doing. Yes, sir. Um, we just, uh, we just enjoy. Yes, sir. Like I said, just giving each other a hard time, all the other wagons, and, and uh, enjoy days like this. So. Well, it turned out to be a beautiful day oh, today yeah. as opposed to yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, better than the alternative, I'll tell you. That is Quite true. Well, thank you very much. Right. I'll try to come back for another visit okay. before you guys uh, get finished for today. All right. All right. Thank you. Yes, sir. Have a good day. You bet. <laughs> <laughs> it's all coming back to me after the last eight years. So this wagon is the honeydew spoiler? Yes, sir. And where are you based out of? Pampa, Texas. Out of Pampa? Yes, sir. Oh, 
Well, I didn't see you at the National Chuck Wagon Cook-Off down in Lubbock last weekend. I don't like Lubbock. <laughs> well, I don't particularly like it either. <laughs> Went to Texas Tech for seven years. And <laughs> it's, it's, not, it's not especially the town or anything. There's just something about that cook-off. I've been in it several times. I just really don't, I don't know. Yes, sir. Well, how does this cook-off differ from other cook-offs that you competed in? In addition to the national cook-off in Lubbock. This is one of the tougher ones. This, this one in Red Oak is probably the Really? This one in Red Oak are the most tough. Still ain't very level with Are you hurt from there? You alright? Yeah, still a little dummy. I'm probably having some good trouble. They're coming out. I've been to Lubbock. Four or five times down there. Yes, sir. And I don't know, just something about the cook off I don't really like. We say it's a little bit tougher in what way do you think? Oh, yeah, or this I'd one's say. a little bit tougher is what you said. Yeah, there's we're a world champion, C4B's a world champion, C Bar C's a world champion several times. Uh, it's just I don't know, it's just it's just tough to win down here. Yes sir. And how many members do you have on your team? Uh, four, to, four to that, five, counting that little bitty guy. Okay. And you all wear matching shirts? No, we try to. <laughs> cooking day, we try to match a little bit. That's yes, sir. All right, check, check the medals on them. Yeah. These? Huh? These here? Yeah. And how many competitions do you normally go to each year? <laughs> Uh, I don't know, we'll go to, you know, probably five or six, we've been to Cheyenne, Wyoming, we've been to the Lazy Arena, uh, here, we cook the Mustang, it's a, just a gathering, uh, and then we've still got Rio Dosa and Red Steagall, no, I'm busy all, all next month. Yes, sir. And where are you based out of again? Pampa. Out of Pampa. They've got a crust on the bottom, don't they? Yeah. And how long have you been competing? Do what? How long have you been competing? About 20 years. About 20 years. Something over. All right, well, good luck. All right, thank you, sir. You, you bet. So here we are with Don Johnson. Don? How are you doing on this chuck wagon cook-off in Clarence? I'm blessed. Is that right? You bet. All right. Well, it's not too much further along where you've got to turn in your uh, food for the judges to yeah. judge on. Where we're, are you at now? We're an hour away from turning our food in and feed in an uh, hour and 15 minutes we'll feed the public. All right. And uh, there's not a whole lot of activity going on. Uh, what else you've got on the fire uh, in the pot well, needs like to be done. I, like I said, we've got everything ready, the beans. Uh, all we like is cooking the steak. And we don't ever cook it till the last minute. Uh, so it'll be warm when the public gets it. Yes, sir. But uh, like I said, the beans are ready, the potatoes, uh, they'll be ready in a minute. The bread's done, the cobbler's done. So. Uh, we're running pretty good, and a lot of times we're in crunch time right about now. We're behind, but we're in pretty good shape today. All right. And how many times have you been to this particular competition? Oh, this is probably 12 or 15. I don't remember. Is that right? Where are you based out of? We live at Amarillo, or really Canyon, so. Okay. 
And the name of your outfit? J Bar D. J Bar D. Well, I'm surprised I haven't run into you yet. It just came from the National Chuck and Chuck Wagon Cook Off down in Lubbock. Yeah. We used to go down there. Uh, I guess the last time we were down there was 09 or 010, something like that. But we used to make them all, but we don't we don't cook as much as we used to. I see. Are there favorite places you like to go? Logan and here. Is that right? They're the two favorite places. And what makes them special? The people. Like those people right there, they're just, you can't beat them. The, thor the thornberries, uh, they make this happen right there. These are thornberries right here? Yeah, they make... They, no, they, no thornberries around here. They make this happen right there. If it wasn't for them, we wouldn't have it. But they're really super nice people. And it's kind of special that there is a uh, connection to this area of oh, yeah. property and the history of the check wagon, is yeah, there not? It's, uh, like this, this is uh, good night, uh, <laughs> celebrating good nights. Uh, the museum and everything, the funds that are raised are, are used for the Adair Museum and it's getting to be quite a museum and they just got a don uh, wagon donated to them and they're trying to figure out uh, a good place to put it. So uh, in the money they get, why, you know, they put it right back into uh, the buildings and everything to try to make yes, everything as nice as possible. And yes, they're sir. doing a great job. Yes, sir. Now, what about your wagon? What it's is the a, history on your wagon in particular? It's an 1897 Moline. It came out of Nebraska. A guy used it. He had a Moline dealership. He used it oh, till the late 30s. He put it in his Quonset barn and it sat there for years. And a friend of mine called me and said, I found this wagon and I bought it. So I've had this wagon since 97. So, uh, and like I said, we. Uh, we cooked twice last year, we cooked twice this year. We used to cook seven to 10 times a year. So, yes, sir. But uh, the Dutch ovens are getting heavier every year too. I understand. So, And one reason we didn't cook as much, uh, all the grandkids were playing ball and we, right. we went to ball games rather than cooking. So I understand. now they're all out of college and so we can cook a little more, which we probably will yeah. this coming year. I just talked to a crew who is all uh, Younger people look like they're in their 30s and, and younger. That's encouraging. Well, see, that's the problem with this chuck wagon. There's not many young people that want to do this. Yes, sir. And uh, a lot of the young people, uh, they can't afford to get into this because a wagon, you can't hardly find a good wagon anymore. It's almost impossible. And if you find just a wagon, they're going to be five to $8,000. And in time, you get your chuck box and all the paraphernalia that go with it. You got a lot of money tied up in a wagon. A right. lot of young people can't uh, do it. But yeah. see, this is my granddaughter. She's lucky because she's going to inherit all this. Oh. <laughs> and she's been doing that right there since she had to stand on a stool to uh, bread the steaks. Wow. Mm -hmm. So. And some of the younger people over there, they've kind of been saying the same thing, that they kind of got indoctrinated when they were kids, yeah. fell in love with it, and they're more than likely to take it up. Well, I'm going to put it in my will that she has to keep going okay. with this. <laughs> <laughs> or you lose the wagon. Okay. <laughs> now, last year at the National Chuck Wagon Cook-Off, Randall Whipple was talking about selling his whole rig. From the truck that pulls the trailer that boy, uh, to uh, all of the pans and, and all that kind of stuff. And yeah. uh, heck, it was getting close to a $100,000 investment to buy that whole thing. Well, he doesn't know what he wants to do. He wants to buy a big boat and go fishing, but uh, <laughs> he may change tomorrow, too. You never know about that boy. He's been cooking a long time, and he does well. He's got a nice wagon. They put out good food. And, yes, and nearly all these wagons, they put out good food, you yes, know. Uh, just like us, we don't put out anything that we wouldn't eat ourselves, and I'm pretty particular, and most of these cooks are, so. Right. People are sometimes uh, a little hesitant to eat off a chuck wagon because they think, well, 
but you know we've got hot water and then we've got hot rinse water and then we got a rinse water with bleach in it so right. all of our utensils and stuff after we get through we take them home and wash them then when we get ready to go again we wash them before we go right. so you know we got yeah. everything i talked to one of the city inspectors in lubbock they came by on saturday morning to check everything out to make sure that all of the sanitary stuff was in place and yep. uh, people were following the city rules whereas opposed to Amarillo uh, essentially Chuck Wagon cooking has been shut down in, the, in Amarillo because of the health department. The health department. And they uh, say well you need to install some sneeze shields and, and well, other things which uh, are you know have no place in history. No, and uh, you know they just made it impossible to have it. And we'd love to have a chuck wagon uh, cook off in Amarillo because we could draw a lot of wagons. But uh, the health department, you know, they want everything screened in, and you know they don't want any flies around. Well, you know we have flies here, but uh, they're not in the food. Yeah. If they are, it's just a little protein. So you know. Right. But uh, yeah. There, uh, some cities are uh, real reluctant to have. It. They're afraid somebody's going to get food poison or this yeah. or that. So, yeah. but uh, if they'd ever really come out and watch us cook and eat with us or eat right. with anybody here, I think they might change their mind. And they've been invited, but they, yeah. they don't do it. So. There's a fellow here in Clarendon by the name of Buster Bruce, um, an old cow puncher. Well, actually, he's about my age, a little bit younger than you are. But he knows a lot of the old-time ranchers that we've been going around and interviewing. One of them is Bill Kraft. He's 93 years old. And, heck, he had flies all around his food when he was six <laughs> years old, going around, uh, yeah, he's you know. Yeah, he's lived a long uh, time. Yeah. But uh, all we enjoy, it, the, these people that we cook with, they're all great people. And when we first started cooking, uh, we started in Red Osa and we had 43 wagons that first year. And now they're down to maybe 17, 18 wagons. Lubbock used to have 43, 35 to 43. They're down right. to nine now. Right. In Amarillo, you know, we had 35 to 43 the same way. Right. And we don't even have it in Amarillo anymore. Yeah. So. And well, that's just another reason why I'm trying to be as busy as I can, trying to uh, capture what might be the last remnants of this tradition going on in this area. Well, it's uh, it's it's like any other thing, I guess. That's uh, a tradition that's been going on for 150 years. You know, these traditions are dying down because uh, the yeah. young people. They don't know anything about it, and they really don't want to learn, you know, so. I understand. That's the problem. Yes. Well, I hope I can do a little bit of something to pique people's interest in uh, well, it would becoming be nice involved if, in you know, like a, a class of seniors in high school or even in college, you know, if you had uh, a documentary that you could show them that uh, this is what happened in the 1890s when Goodnight and uh, uh, what's his name, you know, they built the first chuck wagon out of right. an army wagon. Right. And uh, so, but uh, craftsmen are hard to find these days yes. to build a wagon. Yeah. There's uh, there's uh, guys out there that say, yeah, we can do it, but right. they're not up to the par that uh, most I of see. these wagons are. Now, there has been a couple of fellows based out of Amarillo, and then there's another fellow just south of Canyon, I think, that's been doing some work on various aspects of well, wagon the, rejuvenation. The guys in Amarillo, uh, one of them is Wayne Snyder. He was down here yesterday. Uh, and Bill Thompson, he's the craftsman. I mean, he, he when he puts something out, it's right or he doesn't put it out. Yes. He does extremely, extremely uh, good work. Uh, he used to be an aircraft mechanic, and you know how they have to do their job. Well, he's kind of the same way on building a chuck wagon or rebuilding one. He makes it right or it yes, doesn't put Bill's name on it. So. Yes, sir. So guys like that, but he's getting up in years too. So, you know, like I said, crafts, craftsmen are 
Hard I understand. To come by now. Well, I, I would like to cover one other thing before I let okay. you go. This is I don't I haven't spent quite as bit as much time with other folks. Uh, but you mentioned that your wagon is a Moline. Wasn't that sort of a top-end wagon at the time, as well, opposed to something like a Studebaker? It was at one time. They were made in Moline, Illinois, and uh, but there's there was as many wagon makers as there are cars today, because every little town had a wagon uh, uh, shop in it. And of course, you know, a lot of them just bought the wagon, the seats, the brakes, everything was extra. And they were just grain wagons that hold about 50 bushels of grain, and that's what, basically, that's what they're all used for. So. Yes, sir. But uh, Moline was the top of the line, and they were bought out by John Deere, which John Deere bought out a lot of them. I see. Yes. I have seen some John Deere wagons as well, so right. the Moline proceeds is John Deere. Yeah. But you'll see, you'll see a lot of John Deere's. Uh, John Deere's, Peter Shuttler's, you know, there's, uh, and there's names that uh, I've never heard of, you've never heard of, right. but they're, they're nice wagons. So. Right. Well, back then, you didn't require, or the, the federal government did not require seat belts and, uh, <laughs> and uh, you know, the, the impact bags and all that kind of stuff, That's... which made it so difficult for small business people to start up a business that they could serve their uh, local community. That's right. Territory. If they were if they were a good craftsman and a wheel right or if they had to hire a wheel right to make the wheels and hubs and everything, well the box is easy to make, you know. Yes, but sir. the running gear that's uh, that was a major thing and yes, a good sir. wheel right would uh, turn out a good running gear and then they'd put a box on it and uh, you know, it might have the wagon might have been fifteen dollars or something like that. It wasn't very much. You know, the seats were like ten or twelve dollars, and the extra brakes were twelve or fifteen dollars. So, you know, it's just uh, if they had the the help that was capable yes, sir. and knew what they were doing, yes, sir, they built the wagon. Yes, sir. Well, thank you very much. Well, you bet. I enjoyed it. Uh, yeah, if you could make a document documentary that everybody could watch, why well, it, it might help the Chuck Wagon Association entice some young people to get involved in it. <laughs> so Sue, how far along are you here? Well, we're, we're getting pretty good. All right. I got some steak ready. Yes, ma'am. All right. Well, I see you have moved your fire pit underneath the fly. We got this much here. We got this much steak ready. Oh yeah. Oh, that looks great. And we got potatoes. You didn't make a bad thing. You eat a biscuit, you have to watch it. We got to mash them. Oh yes, ma'am. We got pinto beans. Mm-mm. Anything secret in there? I need to, I need to, well, not real secret, but like we like beans anyway. Right. <laughs> Beans is one of those kinds of foods where you can spice up in all kinds of different ways. Bacon. Yeah, well, you bacon don't want, and bacon. Uh, too spicy, but you want them spicy enough for the judges to to notice them. Yes, ma'am. So, and then they're uh, Wade's doing bread. <coughs> okay. Well, I'll talk with Wade here in a little. And they're uh, getting more meat ready to to fix. Yes, ma'am. So how are your beans? I missed it. All right. How are you doing? Sure, good to see you. Long time. I think it's been a year. It's been a year. Yeah. Across from the Best Western. Check that out before you leave there. I sure will. Well, you're the famous photographer around these parts. How are you? <laughs> hey, you've got a little cupboard left in here. It's just like not mine. Not <laughs> <laughs> hey, Wade, who are you talking hey, with here today? Biscuit. I got a biscuit right How here. How are please. you? Oh, I'm pretty good. 
Oh, okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Well, I'm from the local newspaper. You're Roger. I'm Roger, yep. You ain't never met Roger? I have several times. He yep. never remembers me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks, man. And I know you've covered an awful lot of historical aspects about Clarendon. Yes, sir. I was thinking actually yesterday and debating as to whether I wanted to come up in this uh, rather chilly, rainy, <laughs> hot weather we had yesterday. But it turned off good. As to uh, how I'd be able to spend my time in town. And I thought. Well, heck, I should go by and see if I can look up Roger, yep. and we'll just talk about history stuff. So we could do that about all Clarendon. Day. Yeah, we could. You do that. would. We You'd be willing to do day. that. Yeah. yeah all sir. right. Yeah. Well, I've been working with a fellow by the name of Buster Bruce here recently. We've been interviewing a lot of old timers. Uh, one of them is um, Bill Kraft. Mm -hmm. down at Bryce mm -hmm. in that area and Lord I think I've got about six hours worth of interviews I haven't even perused through as of yet yeah. uh, we did have an initial interview that went about an hour and a half and and I did publish some of that yeah. and so I'm looking to Thank coming back to this area uh, as much as I possibly can to document some of the history of what I believe is the third oldest community in the Texas Panhandle right. altogether. Third behind Mobiti and Tascosa. All right. Well, it's good to see you good again, Good to see Roger. you. Okay. Hey, those are rising pretty good. Those are pretty. <laughs> Bread's your specialty, isn't it? Yes, sir. <laughs> Hello. Well, he won first place at the National Cook-Off last weekend. You want to look at this? Yeah. Here, Dusty. That's a Woo. C bar C brand. All right, yes, sir. Wait a minute. And what kind of a cobbler is being worked up here this weekend? Uh, this is our peach cobbler. Okay. And uh, right here, this is our lattice work. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Were you in charge of so, the desserts on this competition as well? Uh, no, I'm making these cinnamon rolls over here. Ooh, boy. All right. <laughs> How long have you been cooking with Dutch ovens? Uh, I've been doing dishes on this wagon for 32, for a while, for since I was little. But I've been cooking competitively with them since 2007. I don't know if that's 13 years, something like that. Yeah. So. But I don't do much work. I just do a lot of eating. <laughs> Did you see these? I had two other people gone, so we didn't make it. Yes, sir. Have you been to the National Chuck Wagon Cook Off down in Lubbock before? Yes. In years past, yeah. Is there something you like about this particular event that uh, yeah. maybe you don't care for too much about Lubbock? This one here is a lot more laid back, friendlier. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And uh, I got help. And you've got help. <laughs> got a pen for down there. You know? Out here is a whole lot better. We think Bobby is real good to work with. I see. And how long have you been coming to this particular competition? What, five years, probably. Four okay. Five. Okay. Six. And I apologize. I didn't ask you your name and where you're based out of. We're Paladura Cowboy Church. My name is Curtis Hoover. Okay. We're from Canyon, Texas. Okay. Well, I remember the Powder Cowboy Church last year yes. in Lubbock. Um, but I think I talked to a younger fellow back then. Well, I was younger back then. I was a year younger. <laughs> <laughs> younger. Well, we're all retired, right? No. Well, yeah. We, you retired yesterday, and you're tired again today, so that makes us retired. Well. Every one of us. Yes. <laughs> 
All right, is the meat all you've got left to go? Potatoes. And the potatoes. And a but I'm not getting those gloves that melt really well. I think y'all need to concentrate on getting some of the young people in the church involved yes, in sir. this and then that way you won't have such a problem with labor and uh... we got college kids okay okay you know, and I'm not I'm not complaining by no means but you know the thing about it is is you've got to have that want to to be able to come in here and do this it's not just something that you you know say well I'm gonna do this today because I go to church and out of your cowboy church right you got to have a love for this Right. And that's the only way you make it work. Yes. Those people over there, she loves what she does. We love what we do. Right. And that's the only reason I'm here. Yes. For college students, it's sort of a temporary fun experience. And well, you hope that they learn some good character the values is, from this. I'm doing this for the Lord. I'm feeding, feeding my people. And that's why we have our wagon. We take it out and we do cook-offs, we do weddings, we do different things with their wagon yes, sir. and uh, it all has to tie back to, a, to the Lord and what we do for God. Yes, sir. God fed his people and we're feeding his. All right. Well, thank you very much you and bet. thank you for taking the time with me. You bet. Taking care of business. All right, so it looks like we've got some chicken fried steak going on here. That's correct. And you are the cookie of this wagon. Who are you and my where did you out of? Sam back. Howell. I'm you out of Odessa, Texas. This is my 21st year of truck wagon cookie. At this particular event? or no, just, uh, in total 21 years. I've only been coming to this event. Uh, Oh, probably 11 years or so, I'm not sure. I don't I remember exactly when we started coming here. I see. Well, I didn't see you in Lubbock last weekend at the National Chuck Wagon Cook-Off. Uh, I've won that event, but uh, we were, uh, we went to another event. Uh, they hired us to come cook for them, and so we, you know, we, we took advantage of that. So, I can understand. But. But I have I have been to the nationals and won the event, and, and uh, but uh, you know sometimes you got to take those paying gigs. Well, been in business for myself, I always take the paying gigs before I do these types of gigs where I don't make any money at all. <laughs> and actually, I have to put out quite a bit of money to be here. Well, that's the thing. I mean, this is kind of like owning a bass boat. It's a hole in the water you, you know, throw money into. You just gotta, you gotta be willing to throw some money in it to do it. But it doesn't matter what it is. So yeah, that's, right. the, that's the nature of hobbies. <laughs> some guys that get to where they master the whole thing, and then, and then that's the end of that hobby, and they go find something else to yeah. master. Yeah, move on. Yeah, that's sir. my chuck wagon down there at the end. Uh, Hanson Cowboy Dakota. My uh, uh, right over there. Right smack in the middle, right there utensils and just line it up and you can have any or all that you want. Not all that you want, but you can have every choice. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's all you can stand. How long have you been with this outfit? I've been cooking with Sam for about five years, but I've been Boy Scout cooking for Probably better than 40. Oh, wow. Do you so, know a friend of mine by the name of John Madden by any chance? Other than the football person, no. Oh, okay. Well, John has been a Boy Scout for about 60 years now. He's based it out of Amarillo. Well, I, I live near Dallas. Oh, so I probably see. Probably I wouldn't have run into him. Wow. So what brings you to this area? Chuck Wagon Cook-Off. This so, is my 
fifth year, I guess it is. This is the first one that I ever went to. I see. Five or six years ago. I see. So what got you involved in actually participating in this? It's hard work. I met Sam, and of course, both of us have been in, in scouts for years. Okay. And we have a mutual friend that had already been cooking with him, and he needed another person, so I got volunteered. I see. And when I first started, I'd been cooking for a long time in Boy Scouts, and I thought I knew a lot about it until I started this and I found out I didn't know a whole lot. So, I was used to cooking for 8 or 10, 12 people. Yeah. And you cook 30, 40, 50 here. Right. So it depends on, on what's going on with it. So. Are there many events like this? That, oh, there's quite a few. Uh, uh, happening in the North Texas area. Uh, there's one still in Lubbock, but it's kind of getting smaller. Uh, we've got this one. Uh, we go to Mustang, Oklahoma, which is southwest of Oklahoma City. We go to New Mexico for a couple of them. Uh, occasionally we go to Missouri. Uh, Sam takes the wagon and goes to Cheyenne Frontier Day in uh, Wyoming. And that's about the farthest he gets. I haven't been to that one yet. But uh, so we go all over. And uh, Sam also does some fundraisers for Girl Scouts. And uh, so they, they cook in the, usually in the Davis Mountains on that. So but there's, oh, I go to about six or eight of them a year. I see. And there's usually one a month, but sometimes crammed together one every other week. And uh, so it just depends on what's going on. Yes, sir. And since I retired, I have a lot more time for my fun. I understand. And what do you find that uh, is so enjoyable that makes you want to do it over and over again? I love the cooking. I like the the camaraderie with all the cooks, but most of us know each other fairly well. And it's really neat to keep the tradition going. The bad thing is if you look around, you'll find most of them are old people like me. And because uh, the younger ones don't have the time. And because, uh, you know, they got to work and sometimes we have to get here on Wednesday or Thursday. Yes. And uh, so it's a, it's a mad rush sometimes. Yes, sir. And, uh, so we bring as many the younger folks in as possible. And some of them are pretty good cooks, and some of them don't know what a campfire is. So, but everything we do is over open fire. Yes, sir. And with Boy Scouts, a lot of times it's on stoves and, and charcoal and things like that. Yes, so sir. It's a, it's a different style of cooking. All right. Well, thank you very much for You're keeping this well. tradition alive. Okay. Appreciate it. It's fun if you don't burn yourself <laughs> or your eyes don't rot. Yes, I'm in the smoke trail right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I hear it goes to, to handsome, so stay close to me and you can have it. All right, Mighty Vine. Thank you. You're welcome. So this is another wagon I didn't see down in Lubbock last weekend. Uh, who are you and where uh, are you Steve at? Steve Gibson, uh, Camp Cookie. We're from Tennessee. And uh, we're here with a Springfield wagon. And I'm um, proud to have uh, Terry Green out there flipping some steaks around. And exactly. uh, welcome and come in and look around. From Tennessee. Wow, I think your wagon is the uh, uh, wagon that has traveled the furthest distance we, of, of well, all the competitions I've I, covered. We may be the only year. wagon to the other side of the Mississippi River, but we're just can put your foot in the river, so we're not too far from the Mississippi River. <laughs> okay. So, thank you very much. Y'all have a good day. God bless you. All right. Yes, sir. And what are you working on here? I'm making gravy and I am not part of this wagon. I am part of the museum. Oh, you so are? Some of us come help. I see. Okay. So he didn't have a whole crew that he brought with him he, on he this. Was, he was a little short handed. Okay. So we just come in right at the last minute just to help put everything out. Well, they right. still do all the cooking. Right. And then we have college students, our local basketball team will take okay. tickets, and so that's why she's here. So I understand. you'll see lots of tall, skinny girls. Okay. Running around taking tickets. Okay. Uh, there are girls or young ladies who have who like basketball scholarships. Ba basketball for the local junior college. I met a couple of them as yes. I came in earlier. Yes. Yeah. So they come from all over the place. And okay. So for them, this is a unique experience. Oh, great. Great. Yeah. Yeah, both of those ladies I talked to were not from this area at all. One out of Dallas, the other one out of Oklahoma City. Right. Yeah, right. this young lady's from Dallas. Maybe I'll get to talk to them again. And I also need to get over and visit, uh, or, you know, go through the museum yes. a little bit as well. Yes. Because I have not done that as of yet. Oh, yes. We have a wonderful museum. Yes, you do. All about Colonel Goodnight. So, yes, you yes, need sir. to do that. 
And isn't it cool that this is sort of an area where these chuck wagons Originated. are tied to? Yes, that's yes. why we did this because Colonel Goodnight actually was the originator of the chuck wagon in this part of the world. Yeah. And so we're, we're proud of his history and we try to keep it alive. The special connection. Right. All right. Well, thank you very much for making a hand when somebody was in need. Oh, well, thank you for coming back. <laughs> That's what we need more of today is give folks a helping hand up. Everybody step up when it needs it, when it's needed. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. All right. Thank you. <laughs> so what have we got under cover over here? Uh, we have rolls under here and okay. then I believe we have peach cobbler under there. Oh, okay. So they're still working on the steaks and yes, uh, bread, that kind of thing. Looks like there's a pan of bread over here. So how long have you been involved with them today and where are you from and what's your name? I'm Bailey and I'm from Dallas, Texas and I'm out here just volunteering and helping with the wagons. So. Well, and what brings you to Carol Clarendon? Basketball. I see. Yes. So it's a small town feel and yes. it's just something different than Dallas for sure. Right. Yes, sir. Do you find that commutes? Getting from one place to another is a little bit easier here than the DFW area? Uh, not really. There's way more things in Dallas than in here, obviously. Yeah. And that's a huge change, having a Walmart two minutes down the road and then having to drive 45 minutes to a different Walmart. There you go. So are you having to drive clear to Amarillo to do some uh, of the shopping that you yeah, do? Sometimes. Or do you go to Childress? I go to Amarillo. Okay. Yes. All right. It's fun, I like it. I have one more year and then I'm gone, but it's nice. Well, how's the team doing this year? I think we'll be pretty good. It's different than last year's team, but I think we'll we'll do good, so, but we'll see. All right. So. Well, thank you very much for thank pitching you. in and making a hand at this wonderful event. Yes, sir, thank you. Can you I got buy you. him until he gets his okay. stuff? Bill, don't blow it! <laughs> We so have who, lots of family here today. Oh, is that right? And where are you based out of? Well, we're from Holly. My husband and I are from Holly, Colorado. Uh, we have a couple from Arizona, uh, one for, uh, niece from Pampa. There's some family from Amarillo, um, another family from Lamar, Colorado. Wow. So this is a family affair, you it say? It is. It is. Well, that's pretty neat. Yeah. No, we just, uh, uh, it gives everyone something fun to do, I guess. It's a little bit of hard work, but yeah. it all oh, comes yeah. together. Well, Clarendon is not that big of a town. Did y'all camp out by the uh, truck wagon? Well, or? there's like Amarillo and Pampa is pretty close, and some people stayed there. And I see. We have this big white trailer over there okay. that we put our wagon in, and the front part is like a sleeping quarters. Gotcha. So. Well, what brought you to Clarendon rather than down to Lubbock, say, for the um, National Cowboys Symposium? We had come with a friend here a few years ago, and we came last year and then this year, and we just really like it. The people are friendly and work with us really well. And All right. So it's, it's and how many competitions do you normally go oh. to each year? Well, we do about probably five competitions, but we also do some catering. Last year we did 12 events. Okay. And... Uh, I, I think maybe we've got maybe nine with the, the contest and the catering this year. I understand. So. so most of that is up in Colorado? Yeah, uh, pretty much. We went to Cheyenne for a couple of years, but we didn't go this year. I see. Frontier days. So. so what brings you specifically to Clarendon? Uh, we had a friend that was here uh, okay. that came, and we came and helped him, and we liked it, so we just came back. I see. Well, thank you all very much for coming in and uh, giving some folks in this area a uh, little bit of taste of Colorado, I guess, and the spin that you our folks are going to put on the food here today. Yeah, I think so. so but thank you for having us, and like you said, we enjoy it. So. Yeah. Is there anything special about your wagon? Does it have a... Uh, like a family history? Well, or? no, not family. It's probably was uh, built in the like 1900, thereabouts. It's an original wagon. I it's see. a Weber wagon. And the Weber company sold out to International Har Harvesters in 1906. 
so this had to be before that. I see. And we bought the wagon, uh, it's just an old farm wagon, and we put on the, the check box and the bows and the brakes and you know we've done some things to it. But right. It's mainly... So you did pretty much uh, what Charles Goodnight did uh -huh. and taking a wagon that was in, built and intended for an entirely different use mm -hmm. and then added the accoutrements that turned it into a chuck wagon then. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Did you have a pattern on the chuck box to follow? Um, kind of build another one before, but we didn't like it as well, and so we then knew some things that we needed to change. So. I see. Uh, All right. Well, well thank you we again. Okay, you're welcome. And now, who am I talking with? This is uh, my name is Cheryl McFall. My husband and I, Gary, have the trap drag wagon. Uh, our wagon was built in the 1860s. Uh, and has not been rebuilt since. Um, we built the chuck box, the rest of the things we've collected over about a 20 year period, 22 year period. Yes. So we've been doing this a long time. We've been here at Clarendon 21 out of 24 years. Wow. Yes. This is our home, home area. We're from Pampa, Texas. Uh, my husband's family grew up here in Donnelly County, and my father-in-law, Billy Joe McFall, actually worked on the Row Ranch and on the old Row Wagon. So he also built a replica of the Row Wagon that we keep in our barn at home. Uh, we pull it out for friends and family when we cook in, in Wheeler County, where we have a ranch. So. Wow. Well, I'm going to have to visit you folks specifically just to cover that portion of we our Texas love, Panhandle heritage. We would love to have you come visit with us. This is my yeah. husband, Gary McFall, and he is the uh, wagon boss. Some of them. Otherwise known as the cookie, the how cookie. many other names are there for yeah, well, fellas like you who are in charge of such an outfit? The cucinero. His name growing up was Slick. <laughs> that would be his uh, sister, I Danette McFall. Do you share any DNA with a fellow by the name of uh, Waddle? Um, well, yeah, yeah, I do. Plays at the Big Texan. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's great. That is great. Um, we're going to be cooking chicken fried steak, mashed potatoes and gravy, pinto beans, sourdough biscuits, and peach cobbler today. Now what would bring you to this event as opposed to the National Chuck Wagon Cook Off down in Lubbock last week? This weekend? is our home. This is our home. This, we come to Clarendon to cook for friends and family. All right. When in something's just gravy on the potatoes. So. Well, you folks actually have quite a few people who are just lined up right outside the fly here. <laughs> and we love yeah. them all. I see. And how many events do you normally uh, compete in? Or, you know, my husband and I year? still have full time jobs, so we'll only do two or three. Uh, but this is our main one because our whole family comes in and helps us. And it's our right, friends and family, yeah. Well, thank you very much for helping thank to keep you, the sir. tradition alive. We appreciate you. Have a great day. Well, thank you. So have you turned everything in for serving and just that kind in of thing? Food. Yeah. All right. So everything. Like we're finishing up the last of the steaks and okay. fix the start on gravy and everything else is done. Well, one thing I see different about this particular uh, event as opposed to in Lubbock and other places I've been, uh, each wagon would have to serve the food to people coming by each mm -hmm. particular wagon. So you right. guys are relieved from that. 
Is it, do you like it that you're doing it that way? It, or yeah, you the rather... college comes in, helps out, and then the museum, they always send people out to take tickets and, and set up the plates, right. which kind of frees us up to, if we're not through cut, cooking steaks or something, then we can we can do that. Right, and I apologize, I didn't uh, ask you your name for the benefit of our listeners and the name of your outfit and wh where you're from. My name is Calvin Darty, and I'm from uh, Halfway, Texas, and this is the T-Half Circle. And uh, my cooking crew consists of my wife, Leslie, and uh, my mom and dad, Ted and Jennifer. Okay, so about five mm -hmm. yeah. people on the team all together. Yeah. Well, now you've kind of stopped me because I don't know exactly where halfway is. I work Next for the Texas Plainview. Department. It's where? Next to Plainview. Next to Plainview. Okay. Well, I work for the Texas Department of Agriculture for a number of years, and I covered 26 counties of the Texas Panhandle. But I didn't spend much time down in the South Plains area except for in Lubbock when I was going to school at Texas Tech. Yep. <laughs> and I had no reason to go to halfway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you got to be going there to know where it is. Is that right? Yeah. It's not much of a community. You just kind of pass through it on the road. Right. So you're kind of finishing up with the chicken fried yeah, steaks here. So how did you get involved with uh, chuck wagon competitions, doing this kind of work? <coughs> we started started going with another cooking crew that, that was from our hometown when we lived there in Silverton. And uh, they kind of got us interested in it, and then we got us our own wagon and uh, started cooking and going. The first, the first competition we came to that we brought our own wagon up in the eighth grade. I see. So we've been here nearly 20 years. Wow, that's quite, quite some time. And I don't believe I've seen this outfit at the competition in Lubbock. As we've been to yet. Lubbock a few times. Okay. But, but this one's our favorite. We hadn't missed, missed this one. And why do you prefer this particular event? Oh, it just seems like they uh, take a little bit of care of you. And, it's more of a family environment, I guess you'd say. A little bit more relaxed, yeah. I yeah. guess. And all the people that come here, we know everybody, and, and everybody's real competitive, and it adds to it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, as far as the, the judging goes and the uh, supplies that are given to each wagon to cook with, uh, how does that differ from some of the other competitions you've been involved with? It's pretty standard across the board. Everybody kind of gets the same thing. Um, this one, they kind of tell you what they want, want to cook. We have been to competitions in Colorado, and they'll just bring you a slab of meat, and they'll say, do whatever you want to with it. I and see. You can cube it up and make a tri-tip or stew or chicken fry, whatever you want to. But this one, everybody gets uh, the steaks that are pre-tenderized, so everybody's doing chicken fry. It kind of standardizes everything. Everybody gets the same food. Yes, sir. So All right, well, different. the uh, judging is about to begin, I believe, so uh, good luck to you all. Thank you. And it's good to meet you. Good to meet you. Oh, man, you want to say anything? Is that not a mask? You know, I want to thank you, Chad. I'll hold your foot. You've got to have a taste of that. I hope you enjoyed as much as I did. You want gravy on both? There you go. He's a judge. You want gravy on both? Yeah, they could be. Yeah, there you go. Hell yeah. Gravy on both? And often found black. Yeah, and often found black cake for sure. That's a nice looking place. Man, and you got the biscuit. You didn't get any time. Yeah, the cobbler's at the end. You didn't get cobbler in, did you? Hang on, we gotta get the cobbler. Yes, ma'am, please. And you got biscuit? Yeah. There you go. I'll take 
Yeah. Yeah. Right, except for you two, you're too young to be here. Yeah. Oh, good. One more. Good, good. I walk back out to the I saw the drone. Is that in Are they out? Mm -hmm. Thank you. 